Hello, this is the MDC Talks. It's your boy Omari Motion Carter. We are the Motion Dance Collective and we specialize in the creation, presentation and education of dance on film practice. James Williams is here, Anna Clifford is here and we also have our special guest, Rodrigo Rocha Campos in the house. What's up, Rodrigo? <laughs> This is such a great introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs> we got to come in, man. It's, it's, it's great introductions. Uh, the inductions that have to be, have to exist. And, and thank you for joining us today. Um, fellow cinematographer, filmmaker, uh, dance filmmaker, screen dance maker. You know, <laughs> right here. And this is our first international um, talk. So it's really cool to, to use, use uh, Zoom like everyone's using at the moment and be able to chat to um, you so far away. What time is it there now, Rodrigo? It is 10 or 10. 10 or 10 or 10, 10, 10. Um, well, I have to thank you first, first of all, to kind of invite me to do this session because we usually don't have a lot of opportunities to share, uh, you know, the creative process, especially, especially for screen dance, right? Mm. So such a, like a small genre in, in film production. So um, that's very neat. Yeah, man. And that's the thing, even when you get to share things with one another, it's always such a quick touch of what we thought or critiques or even just discussing screen dance things because then we have to move on to the next screening or go and do another thing, you know, other things get in the way. But so it's, it's really nice to kind of spend some some quality time with, with awesome artists. So, you know, that's what this is all about. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, the first question we usually ask everybody is, um, what is their journey? What does screen dance mean to you? What 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 does that term? Because obviously there's so many different terms for it. And um, mm -hmm. I, I was speaking to uh, Marlene Miller recently, who's also a, a fellow Canadian filmmaker, and she was saying that in Canada they 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 tend to call it dance film. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. I don't know if there's a a particular term that lots of people use. Well, I prefer screen dance, and I didn't hear the term until my first experience at a, a screen dance festival, which was in um, 2014. Mm -hmm. I was in San Francisco in a very, very cool um, screen dance festival, and that was the first time uh, someone was speaking um, like on stage, and they mentioned the term screen dance, and that if click right there, because at that point, or well, up to that point, I was mostly uh, focus on the word dance films. And I think dance films is, a, it's, of course, is a great way to, to speak to other people. I, I think um, people that are not exposed to this uh, environment, I think if you say dance films, I think they're probably going to understand more than screen dance. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I find screen dance so, so proper, so much proper than <laughs> dance films. I prefer to say screen dance. And, and, and for me, ultimately, Screen dance for me means non-verbal dialogue. So I'm putting together a story, a visual story, that there's no traditional dialogue. So the dialogue will come through the movement, it will come through what it's you know, put in mm -hmm. the screen, it's gonna be through the, um, uh, the, the post sound or the music, and that's the dialogue right there. Right, and then so coming from you came from a filmmaking uh, background first, right? That's right. Rather than dance. So, so what drew you to working with, with non-dialogue? Because um, a, a few of your films, right, work with, with this, <laughs> this field of movement rather than a spoken word. Yeah, well, it's kind of interesting because um, it, it kind of happened by, by chance, basically. I, I was looking for like an outlet uh, to be creative, to um, just shoot some cool images and beautiful visuals and, you know, very light, very kind of light uh, in terms of story mm. uh, or characters, arc, or anything like that. It was very light. So I got together with a friend, also a filmmaker, and the whole idea was to exchange uh, services. You know, I would work for her, for mm. her film, and then she worked on my film and we basically exchanged services. So <clears throat> at that point, I was like, I don't want to write a script. I don't want to write dialogue. I don't, I don't want to deal with recording dialogue on set. Oh my God, it's so complicated. It's, it's just, you know, it just puts another spin to the, too much. So let's just kind of, you know, shoot beautiful, beautiful visuals and put together like a fancy montage, uh, almost like a music video approach. 
Mm. And then I, I had seen at that point some um, dance films, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> online. And I was kind of drawn to the idea of not having dialogue. Mm. and uh, drawn to this idea that I can still understand what's happening. And it's, of course, it's my own interpretation. Everyone will have a different, you know, interpretation of what's happening. But I was very drawn to that. And I was like, you know, there's nothing more incredible to, you know, to use, you know, uh, this kind of various talents. So you put, you know, a dancer, you put, you know, uh, photography, you put music, and then you just kind of make amazing visuals. Like, it's it's very alluring, right? Uh, and it speaks volumes without, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> it speaks volumes because, um, uh, you know, you still feel maybe in a sort of conscious way. Like, yeah. you understand what's happening, you know, and you connect dots that, you know, you feel like, it's happening and yeah and mm. I think everyone interprets it slightly different mm. but I find it to be also that um, even inside of screen dance there's so many different variations right it's not just like one thing everybody's just doing one thing it's just like you can have like screen mm. dance that is, is is basically formatted just like a music video mm. with visuals different scenarios and all that the music is driving force but you can also have something that is more like, you know, dance for the screen, which is the performance is more important and, and you don't have necessarily, um, you know, a heavy storyline, mm -hmm. but it's more about the movement. Yeah, the aesthetic. Right? Strictly, and strictly about the movement and mm -hmm. not much story, but you also can have, you know, something more cinema, which I think that's what I've been concentrated on lately. It's more like, okay, there are scenes with no movement at all, you feel like watching a movie, mm -hmm. but then there are scenes with dance, so which are confusing two types of um, genres right there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's experimental, there's art house, there's, um, who knows what, documentary. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of exciting to kind of, you know, inside of one genre, you have all uh, those subcategories. Yeah, it kind of keeps itself attached to these interdisciplinary other art forms right it's always kept me satisfied anyway too because <laughs> i've never been a, a a kind of a master of just one trade i've loved delving into a whole world and then screen dancers being able to you can delve into the dance practice and the filmmaking practice uh, uh at the same time you know you're, you're thinking about both all the time at the same time so it's such a great way to like combine no, those things together. the irony of everything for me uh, is that um, as i kept making those things, um, I realized that I was gravitating back to film production. So my first three films uh, had no script. It was basically yeah. a treatment with, you know, description of what's happening. And uh, I had a, a, a character beat by beat because the dancers asked for that. So I had to kind of be detailed what's happening in terms of emotions, in terms of, you know, uh, situations what, what was happening so there was a detailed uh, list of that kind of information but no script and mm -hmm. then when I got to my fourth one I realized that was so complicated to deal with a list that my crew was getting lost I was getting lost and, and everything was, <laughs> it was just a mess so I was like you know something I will type this document in script format okay. like really like it interior day in your yeah. room, <laughs> right? And uh, I typed it, of course, of course, mostly uh, no dialogue. It was just um, uh, action, you know, um, descriptions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and of course, that, that was uh, very important because then everyone could see exactly and there was all the questions were answered by seeing, you know, uh, like the flow. Mm -hmm. And then if we stopped at one point and pick up at another time, we could know exactly what happened, right? Yeah. So, but that happened totally backwards uh, because <laughs> at that point, I had, uh, we, were already, we were already in pre-production and I just realized that was, I was making everyone lost. So it was like, you know something, give me a few days, I'll come back, I'll have a screenplay. So that's what I did. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, and then of course also the other component that I found that I worked backwards was the, in terms uh, of recording sound. Uh, 
previously in my first film, I didn't want to record any audio on set because it was just too complicated. It would kind of prevent or restrain the camera because the cables and, mm. you know, where the microphone has to go. Mm. And, yeah. I, and, I, and at the end of the day, the sound that you get on set is so terrible anyway, so you have to replace. But, but the last two, yes, the last two films that I made, um, the sound comes specially in post. So I delve into um, using uh, a Foley artist Wow. And, and it's incredible because uh, the Foley artist is replicating every minute yeah. action that is happening on the screen mm -hmm. from steps to uh, breathing to, you know, the clothing, everything is recreated. And, um, and once you put together with the visuals, it, it's almost like you can see and feel the visuals or the performance, you can feel it more because wow. you have the 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 visual, not visual, the audio aid to mm -hmm. kind of take you there, right? right? And and it's incredible. So the last two films have been using uh, this component, which is very time consuming for yeah. the artist, but it's incredible to kind of uh, have that. And and when I show to my um, performers, and I say, you know. All of those sounds you hear, <laughs> none belongs to you. Like, this is all <laughs> right? And they flip, and like, no way. Yeah. Uh, I, there's no way. And then after that, I get um, uh, uh, another very talented person. I get the uh, sound composer, uh, which happens to um, mm -hmm. not only, you know, create the music, but also to uh, do the, the, the final sound mix right so i'm very likely to be very lucky to have him around and uh he kind of has to noise by noise sound mm -hmm. by sound he mm -hmm. has to basically figure out the levels mm -hmm. how everything plays it's mm -hmm. so time consuming yeah. i've watched those sessions it's incredible I, I, it's, it makes me so excited to see this kind of work Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I, sometimes I can kind of have my input. Oh, I think it should come a little sooner. Oh, I think, <laughs> you know, this can be a little later, louder, or put a filter or whatever. So uh -huh. it's my last uh, uh, opportunity to kind of, you know, uh, be creative. But I love, so now I, I kind of very much drawn to uh, the post-audio things. Yeah, Amazing. that's crazy, and a lot of people don't think about that as well. There's um, there's a really cool article on sound in the, in the Oxford... Um, in the Oxford Book of Screen Dance, where Jürgen Simpson, who's from Ireland, he's a sound designer, and he says that a lot of um, dance films are technically silent films because they don't use digestic sound. And again, with silent movies, right, you would have the film playing in the back and the music over the top. Um, so now, we're, you know, we're getting into the world where, I guess, um, um, uh, a particular cinematic approach is coming into play where we're starting to record on set and use digestic sound. And the way that actually brings people into the dance yeah. is something that, you know, it, the degree of separation is now gone. You know, we're now enhancing all the senses that humans like because we like multiple senses, right? We don't just want to see and hear. We want to yeah, touch, taste and feel. sensory experience. Right. So yeah. the more senses that you put to, re to kind of uh, relate to a realistic uh, uh, um, feedback. Uh, what am I trying to say? You know what I mean? Like yeah. to give that realistic, um, yeah. Yeah. tangible, you know, yeah. some, something that is is a physical entity rather than something that you're d d departed from and and you're outside of. The, the sound helps to surround you, I think, and and make all of those visual elements very tangible. It's right. totally really, really exciting to see someone talk about that because um, a lot of the times when we talk to people about screen dance it's very much about the dance yeah and it's really nice to have a con well i mean i've just been sat here like just absorbing <laughs> enjoying listening to you talk about you know just post-production and and all that stuff because it's not <laughs> something that is really discussed that much in um in the screen dance right. world. In this realm. yeah and the yeah. thing is it's the last thing people think about because it's they in their head they've got it as post but post-production needs to come 
way before you even you know when you're starting making the movie you need to be thinking about that so i i think it's really cool and and just as a message to other screen dancers out there especially people who are starting to come out it's so important to think about diegetic sound and how you use the sound that the characters can hear for me it's very important because if i'm concentrating more on dance cinema there have you know uh, scenes with no movement whatsoever and it's just mm. like you know it's a it's a it's a you know some story point that has to be conveyed that there's no dance right for me then the sound it has to be there like you have to have that you know i think if you do more music video style then sure you, you might not need the foley but the kind of you no know, screen dance that i've been making lately i i, I think it's very necessary Oh, 100%. Oh, we, oh we're going to move okay. on to chapter five, dude. <laughs> we watched it yesterday. And, and dude, dude, uh, we, had, we had the pleasure of um, seeing Rodrigo's... Is it, is it entitled four. chapter four? It's or called it just four? four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. So we had the pleasure of seeing that screen dot dance um, in, Scotland. Uh, ran, in Scotland, in Perth, run by Simon Files, uh, which was awesome. Dude, you're, <laughs> dude you, I'm going to call you the black mirror of screen dance. I don't know if you... <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't know if you've seen the black mirror series, right? No. And um, there's there's a series called Black Mirror on Netflix. If you ever get the chance, I don't know if there's um um if you're not on Netflix, there should be another way to see it. But it's a, it's a series where it's a dark series. It's a very you will dark love it. Series. <laughs> and the thing is, is that what happens? It presents situations that could happen in the future. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it it does it in a very weird way. It make, but it keeps it in that authenticity of of real. Like these are real people experiencing this stuff. And usually there isn't a happy ending. Okay. which is very rare usually you want to resolve things right but then yeah. the episode just stops and it leaves you and you're like wait wait <laughs> wait are you just gonna leave him like that and i remember you talking in your thing um uh, in your talk at screen.dance about uh, uh not punishing your characters but your characters go through some stuff <laughs> yeah. and, right and chapter five is totally like a, a big example of that but um I, I guess the question here is is what draws you to this darkness Especially as someone who, and as well, you use light so well in that respect. But it's so funny using light, and but the within the theme of darkness. Maybe you can uh, talk about yeah. that a little bit. I, I think that's how I see myself. I, I am drawn to either of so things uh, that are very dark and ominous and like surreal. That's that's fifty percent of me. Oh, not maybe more. Maybe I'll say uh, seventy. <laughs> and the other thirty is goofiness. You know, I totally have a goofy, you know, child dish, you know, kind of side of things. I need to have that because otherwise it's just too much. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> but so far, I've been concentrating and telling, you know, stories that are are like pretty heavy and dark. You know, with with themes. I I find it that um, it, it speaks to my nature and I think that um, uh, I don't know maybe it was the way I grew up that was maybe tough it was you know exposed to you know all sorts of um, mm. you know things like especially addiction mm. and or perhaps you know like the music influence that I uh, was strongly affected by in the mid 80s uh, the goth mm. you know so when the, I put the two together when all those things were put, you know, together, I was very drawn to this sort of like ominous and dark mm-hmm. and goth. Mm-hmm. And um, I was going to my first concert, mm-hmm. uh, watching a UK band, and those sounds basically hit me so hard, like mm-hmm. inside it. My heart, yeah. my body, I was like in shock. I was so drawn and I was like, this is it, this is my realm, that's where uh, I feel like, you know, mm. uh, I have something to say. And then when I went to uh, grad school, <clears throat> uh, I was, you know, making some short films in grad school and my mentor uh, uh, told me when I was graduating and he's like, if you keep making films, uh, please, you know, focus on the dark side. I think you you have something to say. It comes more natural to you. And, you um, and uh, keep shining a light, mm. you know, yeah. in the dark. Mm. And uh, I was like, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure, thank you. <laughs> and I kept, I, I kept it like in my subconscious, you know. After graduation, I, I mostly focused on uh, shooting films and, and working as a cinematographer, not as a director, mm. right? But then 
um, I think at about uh, eight years ago, I was kind of, you know, trying to do something else besides, you know, uh, shooting for other people. Mm. And I was like, well, you know, I want to shoot for myself now. <laughs> right? But even, now, even though I don't work as DP when I direct, I, I totally separate those two entities. Um, mm. I, uh, you know, I, I don't know, like there's an excitement about creating a world mm. that is yours mm. and, you know, it's going to be ups and downs. It's not going to be a perfect ride, but um, it's very, it's very attractive, attractive to me. But you also asked me about the, the, the symbol of the symbolism of the light, right? Yeah. Well, before we move on to that, because I want to dig in there, because um, I know how <laughs> important light is to you. I was just going to, I just wanted to comment on, um, you were speaking to like, I just think it's so refreshing to have someone honestly express a connection to, you know, the the doom and gloom side of things. Because I think a lot of the time when people make dark work or when they make work that associates with dark themes, it's either to communicate a specific moral message or because it's very fad-based. Like, they're doing it as a statement piece more so than perhaps it speaks to something within them. So to mm. have you speak mm. to the fact that actually it's something you connect with and at the end of the day, that's what our art is all about. It's about expressing something that we see in ourselves or that we connect to on a personal, emotional level. Um, and it's so ironic because you come across as such a happy, light, like bubbly personality. Like when we met you in person in Scotland, you're just this ball of fun. Like honestly, that's on, on a personal level, that's the vibe I got from you. So it's just it just astonished me to then <laughs> see four and be like, wow, like <laughs> this is inside Rodrigo's brain, like mm. this this world, mm. and you create those worlds so well, like um, so it's just it's just I just wanted to say how refreshing it is to hear you just state it as the state of fact. This is the work I make because this is what I connect with. And you're staying true to that, and it's incredible. And dude, we love what you're doing. <laughs> so, well, thank um, you so much for saying that because it's it's nice to hear. I think in my my um, I think in my like personality or like uh, the way my my emotions were going uh, when you uh, met me or when I was you know at the festival. It's truly because I I have a huge excitement about showing my work. Uh, my little babies, right? Every film, it's yeah. your, it's your baby. So I like I cannot be more than happy, and uh, that's so you, so you see me like <laughs> like <laughs> that kind of that version of Rodrigo <laughs> in a festival, you know? Yeah. Of course not. It's not every day like that, but uh, no, the excited uh, version. Yeah, the excited, the proud, excited, like the the hard worker, you know, like you know, showing and and what I love about uh, screen dance also is. Um, the fact that it's still kind of small, and then when I have the chance to uh, attend a festival, I think a lot of people are on the same boat, mm. and I think everyone uh, are very, everyone is very proud of sh like showing their work, and I think there is a connection there. Yeah, I think we understand how hard it is to put something together, and um, and I don't know, and but but the thing is, is uh, even though it's very hard, difficult financially, creatively, everything. When we are at those events, it's the celebration component of the hard work, right? Because it's it's like ninety five percent hard, and you have a festival to kind of release all that <laughs> difficulties, you know. And it's like, ah! <laughs> so um, I when I saw um, uh, that um, there was the screen that's happening in Perth, and I, I had met the organizer previously in Spain. Ah. And I, that guy spoke to me, right? And I was like, oh my God, maybe I should go. Like, yeah. you know, I was, there was something calling me like, go, right? Yeah. Go, right? And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to give myself a gift. I'm going to Scotland. And uh, how amazing is that? You know, yeah, like right. you, you be able to um, treat yourself here and there, um, you know, and, and share it. And, and every time I, I attend a festival, I learn a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Because I can see from the curators what they are basically telling us to pay attention to. 
Mm-hmm. And so it's their vision. They share their vision with the other filmmakers and with the audience. And it's like, listen, look, mm-hmm. pay attention to this. Mm-hmm. You know? So as a filmmaker, I go there and I attend. I'm like, okay, um, yeah, okay, I see where this is going. You know, like I'm starting understanding uh, the reasons um, why the films were chosen and mm-hmm. how it becomes part of a session mm-hmm. and what are the current trends and what I should be paying attention to, uh, things to avoid, all sorts of things. It kind of, you know, goes through your mind. But yeah, yeah, I mean, so I do have a bubbly, you know, kind of personality, but... Uh, I mean, we were, we were all bubbly. Well, I think uh, that's the side effect of being around a lot of like-minded people, isn't it? You get excited and you start to yeah. connect with each other and you just feed off of each other's energy. But it's also a good point to note, you know, that uh, even in... What book was it? Big Magic. Yeah. Where she says, you don't have to be... Um, you don't have to be like a, a, a dark artist to make dark work. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. That'd be kind of boring, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you would actually be more productive if you were in a good mood yeah. while you're making the project. Otherwise, you'd just be moping around. Yeah. That would be too expected. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, but no, it's good. It's good to balance that as well because some artists think, feel like they have to go there. Mm. They see artists that they really yeah. like, you know, the Amy Winehouses mm. and the, Kurt, you know, certain people and they go, people oh, they, they make such great art and, and it's because they're in this way, but that's not necessarily mm-hmm. the case. Not, so. Yeah, for 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah. So but to touch upon a little bit on the idea why I keep making those dark things, right? Yeah, because I always put my characters like to terrible, terrible scenarios. And it, <laughs> yes, I, I think sometimes uh, without knowing you know, fully that I'm punishing them to some degree, but it's like, it's more like I'm putting them in situations that uh, we, we see how they bounce back, how they overcome. And, um, and then, you know, for me, uh, the ending is not always happy. As a matter of fact, I think the ending is always very kind of like uh, bittersweet. Yeah. And, but I find that those exercises, uh, those journeys um, are, are used also as a healing process for me. Mm. Right, so we, we put the characters in those scenarios, in those situations, and we see how they react, and we see how they get out of it. Mm. You know, they went to battle, not always they they they're out of it. You know, mm. like fully unscathed, right, uh, undamaged. But uh, uh, you know, it's a healing process. Yeah, it's definitely it's you know, sort of like you you speak up, up upon those uh, subjects and. It's almost like you're making, you know, peace with yourself. Yeah. You know? it's so fun. I think that's yeah. that's good to kind of, you know, exercise in that. Hundred percent. So um, lighting. Obviously, we know from meeting you and and speaking a little bit about this what an important role lighting has in your work. Um, and having seen a, a couple of your films, um, it's really obvious how those choices are always meaningful. They're always very powerful and often very symbolic of the themes and the messages that you're exploring within your films. So can you talk a little bit about why it plays such an important role in the films that you make? Well, I'm, I'm a teacher. Right? I teach to my students and I tell them, like, you know, I'm kind of biased, obviously. I say the most important thing in, in film production is lighting. <laughs> And I, I say that jokingly, but <laughs> of course, I believe that right. there is a, a component of that that is extremely important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's sort of like what I teach to my students is like the, the importance that uh, lighting can carry emotion, right? So uh, light is not always positive. It's not mm-hmm. always uh, comforting and warm and tender. Mm-hmm. And you have everything. You have mm-hmm. the other side of the light, Right, which mm-hmm. crosses the boundary and becomes overpowering, overwhelming, overly hot, too intense, that it is becoming uh, negative, it's becoming aggressive, mm-hmm. right? And, and I like to play with that idea. So in four, I, I had the idea with my cinematographer to create um, something that would be placed in the frame that would also give light and it would be not only a prop or a set dress, but it's also uh, going to be the light that lights 
a set. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. So it came out of like a necessity, but in the end, we, we kind of worked around in a way that uh, there was a creative component. And, um, and the way we kind of worked it out is that uh, we you don't want to make that light, you know, tender and sweet and welcoming. We wanted to kind of have the light overpowering aggressive, overly bright, because it was next to the antagonist of the film. Mm. And I did not want to kind of associate tenderness or, or soft light with the antagonist that was creating the anxiety, you know, the, the nightmare scenario for the main character. I was like, that's kind of visible together. So the light has to be, you know, negative. Mm. And it's kind of like interesting to see because when you, um, when you put the two together, you're like, wow, it was used in the opposite way. Usually people use the light to kind of say that's the light in the darkness. So that's the, yeah. which, yes, you can, of course we do that too. But in this case, it was done for, uh, in, a, in a negative, negative way. Mm-hmm. So even when you see shots of this antagonist against the, this large um, apparatus, the light is so intense, it glows, it kind of uh, wraps around the, uh, antagonist, you know, and it's like, uh, it's mm. overwhelming. It's giant, right? It's a monster. And, um, and I love that that came from a necessity. Yeah. Because mm. <laughs> we were basically in a white room. Well, no, it's not really a white room, but let's just for the sake of explanation, yeah. we were in a white room with nothing. It was just like a, an infinity um, uh, backdrop mm. curve. Um, and uh, we had white shots and there was no grid and where are we going to put the light? <laughs> How are we going to light these people? You know, we, and, and uh, DP it was like, well, you know, usually when we are in those situations, the, the light has to be in the shot. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And you were like, no way. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. So we created this like kind of triangular shape. Uh, it was about uh, six feet tall. Huge. Uh, with uh, like a panel that uh, it, it fit the aesthetics of the kind of, you know, future, retro futures, you know, environment that we had. And it was there, it started because it was a necessity and it became a theme. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. And you mm. mentioned, can, can done, I guess done, yeah. um, you mentioned just now props and um, obviously props are always really relevant and like, obvious in the work that you make um and especially in four and chapter five i i want to ask about specific things but is there anything that you can say i mean i know that you love working with props from your um screen.dance artist panel you talked about props a little bit in that and mentioned just how much you love working with them and how they add another layer to the work that you make um, but where did, where did that come from? Because especially, um, in dance film, uh, you know, we don't see a lot of use of props. I mean, um, they exist, but they're sort of, uh, you know, on the outside, an extra add on. They're not depends, necessarily yeah, something that's incorporated the into the script as it were, um, as, as succinctly and as, as, mm, what's the word I'm looking for mm. as purposefully as yours is in my vision. So why, why are they so important to you? I, Sorry, big question. <laughs> it, it, it's no, 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 it, it kind of, I know, I just want to give a little bit of a, uh, you know, background. Um, be, before I focused my craft in cinematography, what kind of drew my attention in, in films, right? It mm-hmm. was what was in the frame. So the, the fact that I was watching films and paying attention to the dressing and the wardrobe and the scenario, the scenario, the, the, you know, the, the set, yeah. right? I was like, wow, you know, it looks so beautiful. It looks like, where did they find this stuff? And then once I started, you know, really um, working, in, you know, in film production, I remember at the beginning of my career arriving to set and just looking around and just looking at the art department. And I was, I was very, I was very kind of enchanted by the work of the art department. I, it was like where they find this stuff. It's incredible. And 
I think that kind of, you know, hit me and it's still kind of a big influence why I'm so drawn to our department, you know, but of course, fast forward a few years, then all of a sudden I get to know uh, lighting and camera and that's, that's where I fell in love with, you know, the whole thing. But nowadays uh, I, I give a huge, I give a huge component of the work to the, the work of the, um, the set dressers and the art department, the wardrobe and the makeup. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, uh, that's what I want to emphasize my work. I want to make a beautiful photography. I want to put like some very cool uh, characters in there, you know, and I have to use the makeup and the props and the wardrobe to take me there to kind of, you know, craft this world. Right. And I just love the idea that, um, you know, I can use some elements, you know, from rope, plastic, fabric, mm. uh, paint, and use all those elements as part of uh, the expression, you know, and the message that, you know, I have in those stories. Right. I, I am really excited about um, <laughs> everything that we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the... Um, yeah, uh, the, the idea of um, priority being given to art department, uh, as in set, costume, makeup, um, I think that is uh, that is something that's overlooked quite a lot. I, I'm not even just talking about screen dance, but just film production in general, particularly in uh, lower end stuff and in indie stuff. I think it's overlooked quite often. Um, actually usually by cinematographers so it's quite interesting to hear you coming from that world and then prioritizing those things because I think cinematographers and I've been guilty of this get wrapped up in like I want the best camera I want the best lenses I want you know technocranes and dollies and all of this kind of fancy gear to play with and then they they fight to steal the money and uh, <laughs> that money is, is so much better being put in front of the camera rather than behind um so I think that it really shows up in your work that the money has been distributed <laughs> amongst the departments really smart mm -hmm. um, and been implemented into the film in a really creative way and in a way that uh, is very, um, has a really strong sense of, gives the films a really strong sense of narrative, even though it's a, it's a, uh, an abstract narrative. It's not a verbal narrative as we're used to seeing. It's an abstract narrative, but it has a very, very much a sense of conventional cinema within, within its unconventionality, just because of the way that uh, the production has been distributed so nicely and it's been implemented in, in such a, uh, a fair way, um, mm -hmm. getting, getting the most amount of impact onto the screen. Um, that really came across to me when I was watching it, and it's really nice to hear you talk about uh, the you. process behind doing that. I, I just love to kind of use elements, and you know, how can I workshop this element with a dancer, right? And what this would express in in this particular scene. Mm -hmm. So I remember like shooting my third film, and um, we wanted to explore this sort of like idea that we had a person side of a huge uh, uh, piece of fabric. It was like a this, it basically was a bag, <laughs> it was a sack, but the person was inside of it. And, um, and I wanted to see what would happen, combine the movement and see how it would change the, uh, you know, the body language and what kind of emotion it would give and how it would kind of affect the face, you know, and what kind of strange, abstracted, you know, um, results we would get. Right. And it was kind of funny because um, as we were workshopping, I had no idea how that was going to turn out. And I had this uh, thought that, you know, maybe we should kind of put the light behind. We do some sort of like silhouette or uh, something like that, uh, you know, to make it more cinematic, blah, 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 all this. Right. But when we actually arrived on set on the day of the show, uh, it was actually the last scene that we shot for that show. Uh, instead of we having the backlight, it was actually a, a kind of like a, almost like a front light in that sense. Mm. And so it made um, 
is exactly what I sometimes preach not to do. It would become more frontal as opposed to layered, you know, and with contrast. But mm-hmm. in, at the same time, it may look almost like like a high end. Um, Something that like a high end photo shoot that you see in like a fancy magazine. It became very tutorial to kind of have this beautiful set but with no furniture, and then just a person inside of this white fabric that had a little sheen, and then the light uh, was very kind of uh, editorial. It was almost like a photo shoot from you know that you do like a like beauty lighting to. Your, your subjects, right? And then we saw the fabric move, but it was very tender at the beginning. And we were like, oh, <laughs> you know? It had like some angelical moments, very tender moments, and you would just see the, you know, the shimmer of the, of the fabric. Mm. And we were, everyone, the whole set was just so like in awe, seeing how tender and beautiful and soft. Right? <laughs> but then, all of a sudden, the dancer, it starts changing and making it look so dark and mm. heavy and full of angst mm. that we all fell for it because we were like in this trance, right? Like, oh, you know, and it, it was like, what a beautiful moment that was done by the, the, by the dancer, by the performer, mm. that she kind of thought about this. She's like, I'm going to use this this uh, device as a trap. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going to have everyone sort of like fall for it because it's so tender and beautiful just to see the abstracted shapes, you know, anyone, anyone was just so into it. Mm-hmm. But then I'm going to f- show the dark side of, of that. Mm-hmm. And then from tender I went to something very visceral and very aggressive and I know that the, the beautiful angelical face turned into more like skull faces and the movement became more contorted and mm. disjointed and faster. And it was incredible. Everyone, everyone was just like flabbergasted. And mm. um, it was something that we did not rehearse. Mm. Uh, it was something that happened right on the spot. And uh, I just let the cameras roll it because I couldn't, Say cut, (laughs) but it was this beautiful thing that uh, you know, with one particular element, you 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 workshop that, or the the dancers workshop between themselves, and then they created different um, different uh, types of emotions. So it's Mm -hmm. not just one emotion; it's not just the dark or just the bright or the fluffy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like this combination, this kind of interaction. And uh, I love it. That's how the film ends. And I think it's like a punch in the face because yeah, it was like everyone fell for that trap like really nicely. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice. Well, I guess I have a fun, uh, well, a kind of round up question mm. just to kind of get us on to. Oh, that is a good question, Anna. So Anna's just pointing out a question we haven't asked you yet. Um, but uh, I, we were wondering where the choice came to chapter your work, the numbers um because this is number it's number five the latest one chapter five yes yes and so what uh, uh first question is what where did that come from and the second question is what's the last number gonna be is it gonna just continue <laughs> the span of your life until... he's gonna do a he's gonna do a tarantino just 10 and done <laughs> yeah, exactly. oh, or you do that. Exactly. Oh, so i have to do nine, uh, nine or eleven that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah what are your thoughts behind it the, well, the first one uh, was called A Full Circle, mm-hmm. just that. And then we went through production and basically halfway through post, it was just called A, a Full Circle. But um, as we were cutting, I, I was like, oh my God, this, this is speaking to me so strongly. I, I want to make more. I can't just stop here. Yeah. I want to continue, right? And um, and then all of a sudden, my editor said, why don't you just kind of add, like, you know, to the title that this is, like, an essay, number one, or, like, uh, you know, symphony, number mm. number one, you know, or movement, of the, and we just love that idea. So I was like, okay. 
So it, it made it a little more proper, if you know. <laughs> I mean, it could be just for me, but it made it a little more proper, you know, to me that to kind of have like a full circle movement number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and he also he played with this idea that it would push me to kind of keep making, you know, those uh, screen dance mm -hmm. uh, projects, right? So I was like, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that uh, a number uh, that perhaps will also tell the audience that, that you know, if, if when I put up, place a number next to it, you know, it will perhaps imply that there is a collection of work and then this audience member would kind of like start digging in to mm. see what else is out there, you know, why is it called for what, you know. So <clears throat> so that's how it, it came about. I, I think, you know, every film speaks to a different phase in my life, a different chapter of Rodrigo, and yeah. uh, it, it's just as much about the films itself, but it's also about me. Mm -hmm. right? So I just felt very intrigued by this idea of having a continuation and, um, and using that as a calling card too. So sure, everyone kind of has a, everyone might have a collection of, of films, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I'm making, I'm drawing like, I'm making a statement yeah. that I am calling um, every film in a sequential, you know, form, um, because it's speaking about me as, you know, as a filmmaker, it's speaking also the evolution of those films. Mm. So I just kind of <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, grasp that idea and I'm musing yeah. now. I don't know how many more, like, mm. I, it's, I, they're very expensive. <laughs> yeah, were, 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 they all, were they all commissions or are they self-funded? Uh, Bit of both, yeah, both, yeah. Right. bit of both, okay. uh, in, in different proportions. Um, but yeah, like I don't know. I I have ideas, you know, for my next piece, uh, but I don't know if I have the finances yet. Yeah. And I don't know what you know in our present state of right. things how all this is gonna play. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the bottom line is that I I don't want to stop but I might have to change the format of my films. Mm -hmm. uh, the last three of them, um, they were very intense in terms of production. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all the, you know, the, the preparation for, um, you know, set dressing props, all the art, all the, you know, the cinematography equipment, all, all that, uh, it was intense. Mm -hmm. um, so I might have to kind of maybe, um, in the next one or so, um, do something a little like more reasonable that I can just, you know, use uh, simple things and not have mm -hmm. like this production. Because that's the thing about production. It can, you know, when there's money, great. But when there's no money, yeah. <laughs> it becomes a, like a, a heavy beast that Absolutely. you have to kind of, what are you going to do? So um, I, I have an idea to do the next one, mm -hmm. but it was also kind of very heavy production base. So I might have to park that for the, for the future and, and, mm -hmm. and, and just do something a little more um, accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you have any other questions that you want to... Shall we touch on this? <clears throat> I, I'm quite interested in uh, something that you said near the beginning. Um, you used the term uh, cinema dance. I dance cinema, yeah. Cinema. Um, I, I've, I've not actually heard that before. Uh, Amari may have heard that. Um, that to me feels like, well, it gave me this visual straight away as soon as I heard that phrasing. It gave me the visual of somebody going to a theatrical screening of a dance film. Um, is, that, is that to you something that you would like to strive for? Is that a trajectory that you think is uh, potential for this genre? Oh, it's a tough question. I mean, like, I think we, we probably all want to have, like, uh, our shows uh, streaming, like, public venues that attract a uh, much larger audience. Um, but it's, it's a tough, it's a, it's a tough question. I, I, I don't know, like, I have to confess that usually my, I find my films a bit kind of unconventional and it's not for the, you know, for everyone, the, you know, like you have to, I don't know, you have to kind of be prepared. It's not going to be a fun ride. 
Uh, it will be intense. It will involve like unconventional scenarios. Uh, I don't think everyone might be wanting to see that. They might want to see something that um, perhaps put them in a different um, state of mind. Right? So I know like it, it'll be tough. It'll be a tough sell. Uh, I, I, to, to tell the truth, I love sharing my films when I attend festivals. I think the audience uh, in those venues understand my point of view better. Um, and I think yeah, I, I, I find that it's perhaps, uh, as of now, is the, the, the right place to show my work. Mm-hmm. It's like a screen dance festival. One day maybe, you know, it becomes a bit more like, you know, larger, more mainstream, or this, more yeah. that, I don't know. But, I, you know, I really love those, those venues. Uh, they speak to me. And I, I also uh, I agree with you that the term dance cinema um, perhaps is not as common. I've been using that uh, perhaps in the last year uh, because I, um, <clears throat> I was selected by this uh, uh, organization in Australia and the curator, um, she calls it the, um, the festival. It's an online festival. She calls it uh, dance cinema, dance cinema org. And with conversations, with conversations with her, I realized that, um, you know, I, I was in that category. My films or the films that uh, I've been making lately would be falling in that category. We are not always with, a uh, choreography on screen. I have scenes that have no choreography whatsoever. And because it's, uh, there's a lot of plot involved and, you know, a lot of storytelling, I felt like, yeah, there are moments that it's just like you don't realize you're watching. You're not watching a screen dance, right? It's almost like watching a, f- a traditional film. You know? So I think that made a, a very uh, fitting term. So I've been using that. Uh, you know, make it slightly uh, more uh, appropriate for the type of format that I've been. I doing. think the I think the title is great. I, I, like I say, it's the first time that I've heard that used, but I think it's really appropriate um, having seen what you've done, and I think it's something that I relate to quite heavily, coming from a from the cinematography side of production. Mm. Um, I think it's something that I might have to adopt off you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, that's the yeah, and there's there's so many different terms for it. And again, people, the the reason there's so many different terms is because people practice under all of them. Do you know what I mean? They, you know, yes. the video dance, the cine dance, the dance for camera. Um, and dance some, on film. Yeah, Simon was saying the other day we can't call it dance film. Perhaps if you're not using film. Oh uh, yeah. Right. So then that's where video dance comes from because Mm -hmm. video and film are two analog digital differentiations of moving image. Mm -hmm. So then some people say, okay, then screen dance is a combination of moving image and dance together, but moving image is separated into video and film. That's what I've been teaching recently, but each each year it changes. (laughs) Each year I find a different one, like even Amsterdam is a cine dance festival. Uh So each new festival has a new, it will bring out a new term. What's What's our one at the MA, Frame Rush? Yeah. So I'm going to call myself a frame rusher soon. <laughs> so nice. Just, right. um, cool, updating and upgrading the terminology all the time, aren't we? Um, so I guess, last but not least, Rodrigo, we're absolutely going to obviously attach your website and make sure that our listeners can check out your work and see what you're all about. But tell us what's coming next for you and how we can follow your work. Um, well, I think now I have to promote uh, Chapter 5. I, I recently uploaded in, in Vimeo and also uh, at uh, Film Freeway. Mm-hmm. So uh, I use those two platforms quite a bit to uh, market you know, my work. Nice. Um, so, yeah, like I, I think I uploaded for about uh, a month, maybe two months, I don't know. So that's really the time frame that I, I finally finished the, uh, the film and uh, started like, sending it to festivals. So, right. so that's that. I have to do that marketing, <laughs> which is like, it takes forever, right? It takes like months and months and months. So it'll be there for the next year. I'll be sort of like promoting chapter five, which I, I find it's going to be a tough sell. 
I, I don't think so. I, I disagree do, with you. No. We, we I 100% disagree with you. Yeah. I think it's going to yeah. fit right nicely into a few different things. Cause, and no, that's how I'm people thinking. curate stuff as well, because they want to... They, they'll, they'll usually... When we were doing it for our festival at the Masters, we were like, okay, we need a breather film. Okay, now we need an opener. We need one that's just going to blow their socks off before they move on to the next screening. So, you know, we, we uh, film uh, film festivals, they're like curated like mm-hmm. albums, right? Oh, uh, thank you. you know, every, every song every song is going to be a different vibe. And I, I, I love your film, man. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. We were jumping. We were like, <laughs> oh, his reflection's in the TV. His reflection's <laughs> in the TV. And then I was like, where did he get that TV from? Because again, just as you think, like, where is that? What year? Did that, that did that did that TV had a back on it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's little things like that. It's just exciting, especially uh, again we're in it. So I guess it's a different um, um, perspective perspective as well. But I, uh, I think it's it's like one of my favorites this year. I'll tell oh my you god, right thank you. I just find that I think I I I've been playing with this sort of like idea how much movement it's in, you know, and it's there. And this one is the one with the least amount of movement and. I don't, I can't even call dance, it's more movement, mm. right? So there's, so I'm playing, I'm playing with fire here. <laughs> I don't know what territory I'm going to, or like, I don't know how people will, will see that. They might say, oh, this is not a screen dance film. There's no dance, right? Mm. Or they might say, oh, this is not a traditional film. This is so too weird to be traditional or to be mainstream. Yeah. Mm. So where this is going to go, um, we'll see. Like, yeah. Okay, well, right? we'll be pulling for you because no, we, we love chapter five. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I had to do it. Right? I had to, like I had to get that out of my system, and I don't yeah. who knows how to, what the next is going to be. If it's going to be more about the choreography than you know than before, mm-hmm. who knows? But I ha- I have to speak you know right. that message and and build the way you saw. Yeah, yeah right. definitely so, right. Like like Ricky Gervais says, he says it about jokes though. But he was, he says if you've got a joke to say, just say it. Win, lose, or draw. <laughs> and I think the same applies if if you have a creative idea, speak it, get it out there because it doesn't matter. You're you're always gonna feel more satisfied for for actually bringing Having it to fruition. It. Yeah, yeah. than not yeah. doing it at all. So thank you for making it. Oh, thank right. you. Uh, very nice. And then, uh, you know, I, like I said, I, I have a, already an idea to, you know, to make my next one, but with all this kind of change of, of shift of gears that we've been yeah. having lately, mm-hmm. I might have to kind of park that in the back burner and then kind of do something else. So I just find that at, nowadays my, my brain is not even like, I can't even get anywhere close to, oh, let's be creative. Uh, wow. I don't know, like there's, uh, there's a, it's a too uncertain, it's a too much uh, anxiety and- uh, Absolutely, the correct and I'm sure it will kind of ease you easy off easy. and then we start like kind of, you know. Yeah. Not no, exactly, and then the funny thing is, I was saying, babe, chapter five, in this time, like this film right now. Yeah. Oy, I, that's think, like, I think that's why we were imagining that's that it how I feel like some attractive. days yesterday I was feeling like that yesterday I was feeling like chapter 5 I was like ugh just you know you just well, I think we've all had those moments where we felt like especially in a time of isolation you know um, mm-hmm. all of these things going on it, it's it's um, it's so um, it's just a coincidence I guess that it, it oh wow it, whoa in, thank, you, thank you for the tip <laughs> yeah. right there's definitely a lot of a lot of parallels between chapter five and I think sort of the inner demons that a lot of everyday people are having to deal with right now because mm. of the pandemic and the way it's affecting the world is the film staying online um, for the moment yeah. yes and yes. when it goes on tour you'll take it off <laughs> I'll just ask him. I'll just should we tell our listeners to go and check it out? I was just wondering if it's gonna stay online or because we take ours off when it goes to festivals. Um, no, I keep it there. Oh, wicked, amazing! <laughs> so right. people need to check this out. Yes. You know, I, I haven't had a request from a festival to remove it or to make it, you know, off screen or uh, right. I mean, offline. Um, you know, I might have to do that if I get a request, but um, you know, like. For me, it's for someone to kind of be able to uh, find my work. They have to kind of do a little bit of digging. It's not just like too um, obvious or too like approachable. So you have to do a little bit of research to get there. So I find that it's still kind of protected. You yeah. Know? So it's still available. 
Nice. Well, thank you so much, Rodrigo. This has been great conversation, and we really appreciate you tuning in from Vancouver. Thank you. This is our first anyway. digital podcast, so you know, hopefully, many more to come. But it's always a joy, and thank you so much for your words and your wisdom. We really appreciate your time. That's awesome. Well, I have to thank you guys, and I'll thank you again for the opportunity because uh, you just made my day, right? So, like, uh, I'm gonna start, like, I'm gonna continue my day, like, hype like this and bubbly, like you guys said, you know. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for, uh, you know, for listening and to give me the support to kind of speak about my work. And it was very nice to meet James as well. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I love this kind of work you guys are doing. So uh, it's it's very supportive and it's very encouraging to, um, you know, low-budget filmmakers like, you know, like me. So I appreciate that you guys are doing this kind of work because it's, it's electrifying as well. Like, That's yeah. it. We need to support each other now, right? This is the time. Yeah. But yeah, man. Oh. And, uh, and, and that experience that we shared a year ago in, 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 in Scotland mm -hmm. was very, it was very special. And, uh, you know, I think, um, I, I think we are basically on the same boat, right? Sure. And I just love, you know, to kind of, you know, see you guys again, see how yeah. things are, you know, going. And 100%, let's keep the conversation, conversation going. going. Yeah, yes, totally. yes, keep the network and uh, the friendship going. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Thank you so, so much. This is BMDC Talks. <laughs>